Most development sites that come forward, especially in big cities, um, already have existing buildings on them. And so the very first thing to do is to conceptualise the site as the site with the buildings and to see whether whatever the scheme is that is sought to be proposed um, can be put forward um, on the basis of the existing buildings. Um, the second thing is that when um, looking at the buildings that are there, um, what steps can be taken to improve their operational carbon emissions? So can they, for example, be insulated um, or can um, elements of them change in order to improve their carbon performance? Um, and then the, the third is uh, overall when one is looking at new buildings, um, and this isn't really um, retrofit per se, um, but is looking at those sites, those few sites where there is nothing there, um, can buildings be built um, on a standard which is, for example, a passive house standard, which would be uh, a, a carbon um, sensitive standard of building. You're cutting down on embodied carbon by um, using the existing framework of a development you have there in, in the first instance uh, and, and retrofitting it rather than demolishing and replacing it. But uh, just to be clear about the distinction, so you, you have embodied emissions effectively, things like manufacture, materials, cement, um, and th those are in contradistinction to operational developments, which are things, as, as the name suggests, things that um, relate to the operation of the development you're running, things like heating, lighting, ga gas may be one, things that happen during the lifetime of the development after the materials that construct it are already in place. If there's a retro first and retrofit, uh, usually that does not mean demolishing certainly uh, all of the building, sometimes it doesn't mean demolishing any of the building. So you're immediately getting a carbon saving because you're not demolishing and so you don't release those emissions. Um, even if you do demolish, then uh, the second thing that happens is that there's reuse of materials within the building. Um, so that, for example, all the concrete isn't just taken off um, and put into landfill or, or, or put into uh, some sort of other way of filling land, but uh, is reused within the building. And then the third way that there's a saving is that often these buildings are designed so that when they come to the end of their lives, they can be deconstructed in a way that means most of the material within the building you're, you're retrofitting can be reused. So it's a continuous circle of the use of the building and its materials. I don't think it has formal legal status. There's no presumption presently in favour of any statutory provision. Although I think in, in your part of the talk, Estelle, you refer to mm. um, a priority in the London plan or amendments to the London plan um, that do um, effectively indicate that where there is a retrofitting option and it was result in a carbon saving, it's to be preferred over the demolition and, uh, and um, uh, replacement approach. But I think that the thrust of our talk is, is essentially that even if that regulation or regulation providing for um, a priority towards retrofitting doesn't currently exist, we think that regulation that uh, necessarily involves the calculation of embodied carbon will soon come into force in the UK or is likely to soon come into force in the UK. And we think that what will that, that will mean is that there will be a necessary consideration of embodied carbon potential savings in developments and that that will probably have a knock-on effect which will result into future, in future policy requiring a preference for retrofitting or if there's no policy, uh, when you compare a development that's going to be more carbon intensive to a development that's less carbon intensive against the, the framework of the Climate Change Act and our obligation in that act, then there'll be an obvious requirement um, to favour the retrofitting option, even if it's not a, a mandatory provision to do so. That's an area where uh, a, a number of organisations, um, including the Architects Journal, which is emphasising retro first um, as uh, an approach, uh, have been calling for change. Uh, and it, I, I imagine that will come, although at the moment, um, positions which reduce uh, money going into the revenue rather than increase it are going to be difficult. If I was a planning consultant, um, and, and I was advising a developer on um, certain types of development, it's very likely that either the client or that the um, 
the funder of the development is going to have environmental and social governance, governance obligations and I need to be able to advise on the environmental element of that which will include embodied carbon. Um, if I'm coming in as a barrister um, in this and Rome I want to add to this, um, it's part of my obligations in addressing the risks and the um, potential ability for a development either to differentiate itself or to come against, come across risk um, in putting a development forward um, that embodied emissions is going to be part of what I advise on. Yeah, I, I just think it's incredibly important if you're going to propose a development to have considered what the, the, the cost, the carbon cost of the, the, in the embodied sense of what your development is going to be, either because you say that it's going to result in a saving to some other alternative approach or because you say that that, that achieving what needs to be at that particular parcel of land can't be achieved without the carbon cost that you're going to ask the inspector uh, or whoever it is, the local authority, um, to, to make. And it's a, it's a very considerable risk at the moment that if you don't deal with it, another body will. Um, that one of the, uh, that for example, um, Save Britain's Heritage has raised this as an argument against the new M&S development. Uh, the um, Barbican Quarter Action Group has raised this against the London West Wall development. Um, there's an action group which is being put in place to deal with the new Justice Quarter development. You will come up against uh, opposition if you have not considered the embodied carbon of your development and it, it's a real risk to you. Mm -hmm.